everyone. I'm Ryan Mannion, president of the Travis Mannion Foundation, and it is my distinct honor to welcome you to the 2020, if not me, then who, virtual gala. While I wish we could all be together this year, we've been given an opportunity to highlight the work of our Spartan community in a new and innovative way. And we have a very special production planned for you tonight. Very soon, we'll be hearing from honored guests of TMF who lead both within the military community and outside of it. We'll share highlights from some of our most inspiring stories and milestones from the past year. And we'll even hear from a few exciting guests who are joining us virtually. And as always, we'll be honoring three very deserving award recipients and recognizing the ways in which they embody the mission and values of the Travis Mannion Foundation. We all know that this year presented unique challenges for each of us. And tonight is a chance to showcase the resilience we've seen in the face of those challenges. When all of our lives changed in early spring, instead of just turning inwards to care for yourselves, instead of giving up on others as tensions rose worldwide, you, our Spartan community, chose to connect with one another, to learn from one another, and most importantly, to serve our local communities for the greater good. Tonight, we bring you this one-of-a-kind experience to recognize Spartan leaders who continue to serve and inspire others. I have the pleasure of introducing to you now our special segment with one such leader, Major General Clifford Stanley. General Stanley has served in numerous command and staff positions during his more than 30 year career in the United States Marine Corps. Beyond his military service, he's held many titles, son, husband, father, doctor, minister, mentor, but always leader. He is a prime example of resilience in the face of adversity. Please enjoy our distinguished guest, Major General Clifford Stanley. I mean, life's gonna throw you some curveballs. I've had some serious curveballs thrown my way. I'm Cliff Stanley. I served 33 years on active duty, and I also served as the Under Secretary of Defense for Personnel and Readiness in the Pentagon in the Obama administration. At this point in my life, and as I'm reflecting on what got me to that point, I have to go back to segregation, literally the dehumanizing aspects of uh, what's happened throughout my life. I remember my dad as we would be driving south, and I didn't understand it at the time, but uh, we couldn't stay at hotels. <laughs> they just packed lunches and packed things, and we would stop at uh, designated spots along the way. We stopped at a gas station one time, and the guy filled it up, no problem. My father paid him the money, and he was waiting for the change, and the man didn't give him the change. He said, I'm not giving you anything, and he used the N-word, and Dad just kind of rolled up the window, nodded, and then we just drove off. But I think what really hit me was that they also knew that these little kids in the back had ears, and Mom and Dad didn't discuss it. So we were learning examples of resilience early on about adjusting and adapting in an environment that could be hostile and could be detrimental to you. We had the Orangeburg Massacre. February 8th, 1968, while I was a student in college, there were three students killed and maybe 30 plus injured. I was a junior class president at that time, and then the following year I was the student body president. So I'm, I'm very, I was very active in the student you know, movement. We had marched downtown, we were integrating bowling alleys, we were integrating the uh, theater. The president at that time of our school told us the same day, don't go on the campus. You could sense what was happening. Most of us did. But, heck, we're college students, I mean, so there were a lot who didn't. There were some shots uh, fired, and they shot and they killed three students. Whew. So, um, I guess the lessons that I learned in South Carolina uh, planted a seed for what was going to happen, but I didn't, you know, obviously didn't anticipate it. 
Vietnam's going on. This is 1968. I joined the Marine Corps. Didn't expect that. I wasn't planning to make a career out of it. I just knew I wanted to serve. I knew everybody couldn't be a Marine, nor did they want to be a Marine, but I really wanted a challenge. I wanted to see if um, I had what it took. So when I joined, there were fewer than 100 um, black and officers, you know, African Americans, out of probably close to 22,000 officers. Um, every duty station for about the first five years, I was like about one of just me. Once I was engaged and involved in leadership with Marines, I knew that that's what I wanted to do. And I knew I'd be good at it. My wife and I, we've been married now 50 years. Uh, so we've been married for a couple of years. And then we were stationed at the Naval Academy at the time. We were just in our first year there. We were at my brother's house on Sunday uh, afternoon. This was uh, April 13th, 1975. I'll never forget, you know, it was about 5 p.m. My um, uncle, his name was Connie Stanley. We were separated by about a block as we left the same time, but lights just got us. As we're driving down, I'm just looking for a, a gas station, and all of a sudden the window broke out on my right, you know, on the passenger side. Uh, Roz leaned over on me, it's my wife, and then another shot hit the trunk of the car. My father and mother were in the back seat with our daughter, who was three months old at the time. So we ran down to my uncle's uh, car, and, and we could see that he was, uh, gone uh, because he'd been shot in the chest and the stomach. I looked back and we saw the, the medics, uh, you know, paramedics pulling my wife out. Uh, we ran back up and of course she had been paralyzed immediately so she didn't realize that she'd been shot. And I prayed and it worked out. I remember standing next to my wife and uh, she's laying in a hospital bed. She's scared. And there's a guy in the next room who's a quadriplegic gunshot victim. The only thing he can do is move his head. He has a trach to breathe. I looked at my wife and I said, we've been blessed because you're here. You're going to be able to use your arms and do things. You can learn to drive again, hand controls. We did. Those are the kind of things that help to build character, to not only build character, but your resilience. I mean, it's, it's just a constant building. My life priorities at that point, um, and this is now, I've been in the Marine Corps a little, little over five years, uh, became more about serving others, more about caring for others. These are challenging times. Um, they really are. But I believe our nation is resilient. Um, there are going to be some ups and downs. When I look back in history, there have always been ups and downs. Always. So I can't help but be optimistic about our country. I'm optimistic about where we are. I have faith in our country and our people. I think we have some good stuff uh, in this, these here states, the United States of America. What makes a legend? Is it the one with the most metal? The best in the world, the greatest of all time. Or is it those who leave the game better than they found it? Breaking down barriers, building opportunities, and bringing people together to do better, be better. They say legends aren't born, they're made. And at Under Armour, we're thinking bigger than just what's on the field or in the store. We're thinking about people and what brings them together because it's about more than just who scores. It's about creating a future where everyone gets a chance. We're using the power of our global network to create real change. One that's fueled by every teammate every day. We're helping empower the communities where we live and work to become stronger, more resilient, because at the end of the day, when the points fade away and the competition fizzles, the legend will always remain. Let's make our mark. Let's leave our legend. We will.
I'm Joe Dunford. A little more than a year ago, I took off my uniform after completing more than four decades of service to our nation. During that time, I was fortunate to lead at every level, from platoon commander to my most recent appointment as the chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff. A great deal about the military profession changed during my career, and today, the pace of change is accelerating at an extraordinary rate. But while the changes I've witnessed have been profound, there's an aspect of the military profession that hasn't changed through the years. What hasn't changed is that the military profession is ultimately about people. The primary difference between success and failure on and off the battlefield has been about the human, not the hardware. In fact, notwithstanding all the changes in our profession, I believe that any success we've had can be directly attributed to the actions of individual soldiers, sailors, airmen, and Marines. Now that I've departed from the military, I can see that those who have worn the cloth of our nation continue to make a difference when they return home to their communities. Very recently, I was honored to join the Board of Directors at the Travis Mannion Foundation. One of the main reasons I wanted to help lead this organization was because it recognizes the unique contribution that veterans can make to our country. Most importantly, it recognizes the role veterans can play in developing the character of tomorrow's leaders. Specifically, I was drawn to TMF's youth development program, Character Does Matter. In this program, veterans and families that have fallen are trained to serve as mentors to youth. They develop an inspiring character program and form meaningful relationships with the next generation of leaders. I've seen firsthand the impact of this program, enabled by partners like Under Armour. I can think of nothing more important to our nation than to provide our future leaders with strong, positive role models. And the fact that veterans have stepped in to play this role is no surprise to me. It's exactly what I witnessed these men and women doing throughout my years in service. Setting the example, leading with character, selflessly serving, and mentoring those following in their footsteps. Now I want to introduce one of our future leaders and his mentor, Marine veteran Ben Alexander. This leader clearly stood out in this year's Character Does Matter. For that reason, I'm proud to name Dante Smith as this year's Character Does Matter scholarship recipient, which has generously been provided by PNC Bank. Let's take a look. Hi, my name is Dante Smith and I am 17 years old and I used to live in Los Angeles, California and now I'm in Mesa, Arizona. Life growing up there was hard because it wasn't like just peaches and cream. You couldn't just walk to the store and nothing would happen. The truth, it was, it was scary because it was like every day you have to walk to school or you have to walk somewhere, you have to think about that like, I don't know if I can go back home today. Yeah, one of the uh, the big issues that um, made us move all the way to uh, Arizona was my cousin, he got, uh, his name was Larry McKay, and he got killed at 17 years old. He was always my big brother, he was my mentor, like, and he, he, he was my role model, the person I looked up to. He wouldn't talk. He wouldn't talk about it. He still don't talk about it. But I didn't want him raised there because it could have been either, even though he, me and his dad is there, it could have went a different way. He could have either wanted to retaliate for my nephew or get join a gang, and I didn't want him to have either one. Yeah, when we got out here and he went to Keno, yeah, it was a lot of like a lot of anger, a lot of aggression, a lot of mad, and you know, and that's when he came to with Sergeant Alexander. So I met Dante in 2014. Dante was a seventh grade student at Keno Junior High School. At that time, the Mesa Police Department had a collaboration with Mesa Public Schools and various community partners. I can remember on the first day of class, him walking into the classroom with that traditional LA swag, can't tell me anything, leaning back, strutting, and I can remember thinking to myself, oh, this is gonna be fun. They had come from LA, they wanted a better life, they wanted to make sure their kid was safe. And knowing that you have that support at home and knowing that we have these programs at school and that we have this connection with Mesa PD, it was just, it was, he was a perfect fit for this because he was going to get support from everybody. The impact that 
serving as a Character Does Matter mentor through the Travis Manning Foundation has had on me has really continued to propel my motivation for, for serving young people, to helping them achieve things that they may not have believed that they could achieve um, had we not interacted with one another. And anytime, and especially like in Dante's case, anytime somebody exceeds expectations and is recognized, especially at this level, it's just validation for me that what we're doing as a foundation and as veterans, it, it's working and it's effective. I've seen a big difference in Dante. Attitude, work, everything was a different change. And he, he, just didn't, he just didn't deal with him in school. He dealt with him out of sight of school here. Dante went like places with him to do stuff, you know, positive stuff. And I knew he was for my son. Lucky. Dante, who could have easily been described as a very selfish person when he entered the program, has now become very selfless. You can see him regularly out there volunteering, trying to help other people. At Kino, I was the mess up kid. Like, I would get suspended. And a lot of kids knew me up there, and that's what I would go back for, just to show those kids, that certain group of kids, that I'm in school still, that I'm about to graduate, and that I'm doing a lot of stuff. Dante's been a blessing to our family. He has not only inspired us to become better people and better parents, but he's also keeping the legacy alive in his interactions with my children. They look at him like a big brother, and so he has a lot of influence and, and impact in their lives. When I found out I was receiving a TMF scholarship, I cried because it was like, I've never heard of somebody, any of my friends, I've never heard any of them get a scholarship or even go to college because it was, it was just like, People that I hung around at first, they didn't think about stuff like that. And he sat right here and told us, I mean, we all three cried. As soon as he told us, Dante started crying first and then me and his dad, because I wanted Dante to go to college, uh, but we couldn't, I knew we couldn't afford it. I'm gonna use a scholarship to get a, a, a college called Benedictine to become a veterinarian because I have a passion for animals and I love animals so much. Right now, he could be anything he wanna be, he can. He got it in him. He can be anything he want to be. TMF is so incredibly proud of our community. People like Ben Alexander and Dante Smith, who have stepped up as an example of character to us all. This year, having role models of character was particularly critical. And I'm proud of the way our volunteers came forward to play that role. Just days after lockdowns were in place and shelter at home orders were issued, our volunteers were on the ground, responding to immediate and critical needs. They were particularly creative in thinking of ways they could support others while keeping their own families and neighbors safe. As TMF worked to organize and deploy our volunteers to serve, it became immediately clear to us that many of our own members were struggling themselves. So we got to work and we developed a plan to support both the needs of our own members as well as the needs of the greater community. We knew that if we took care of our Spartan base, they would feel supported and then take care of the people and the community around them. And that is exactly what happened. Here is a look back at what we were able to accomplish together. And we begin tonight with new developments in the coronavirus emergency. The year 2020 was, by all measures, one of the most challenging in the recent history of our country. You're going to start to see a wave of patients and a wave of emotional behavior that's economically related. From the global pandemic that claimed thousands of American lives, to civil unrest that divided thousands more. At the same time, we have all seen the violence, the looting, destruction, and now death. We wrestled with forces that threatened to overpower us. Grief, loneliness, isolation, mental and emotional exhaustion, 
divisiveness, and anger. Strain right now for just about everyone between the pandemic and the unrest with the protests that are taking place. Right but now. as with any challenge, TMF Spartan saw an opportunity. We would not be overpowered. We stayed true to our values and allowed them to direct our efforts. Care for each other and care for I'm the community. Back here. Can you still hear me good? What's up, TMF? This is Chad Johnson, the Rally Chapter Lead, coming to you from a very rainy North Carolina. Let's kick this off. Welcome back to the Travis Manion Foundation Character Does Matter program. How's everybody doing today? Heather's in the house. If, if you remember one thing about everything we talked about today, what do you think it is? Kindness, right? We led buddy checks, hosted virtual socials for the isolated, and set up an online hub for well being resources. We put the mental and emotional health of our membership above all else. We organized food drives and gathered safety equipment. We brought our veteran led character program to thousands of virtual students, reminding them that character is never canceled. Veterans are leading the way in this program called Character Does Matter. We'll be kicking off with Facebook Lives every single day as long as the need exists. And we have different veterans that are gonna teach the fundamentals of what it means to live a life of character. We stay true to our mission and expanded our impact. In short, we did what we know best. We led from the front and served the needs of others. In a year marked by deprivation and divisiveness, we sowed generosity and unity. We're not out of the woods yet. We know that next year may bring just as many challenges and maybe even more. But as always, we'll be there, ready for the next challenge, ready to serve. No doubt about it, this year was a year that challenged us. If ever there was a time that required us to be resilient, this year was it. As individuals, as a community, and as a country, we were all pushed to our limits. And at Travis Mannion Foundation specifically, it was an eye-opening year because it taught us some very important lessons about our organization. Weeks into the onset of a global pandemic this past spring, we had to make some sweeping decisions to ensure that we could continue to deliver our mission. We knew that we were operating in an entirely new and unfamiliar environment and it was gonna take determination, agility, and innovation to serve the people who needed us. Thanks to the support of dedicated donors that fuel our mission and the veterans and families of the fallen who lead it, we did just that. We moved quickly, got out in front, and we got to work. And we learned something very powerful in the process that I wanna share with you. This past year made two things abundantly clear. First, TMF is here for the long haul. While many other nonprofit organizations were forced to close their doors, leaving many vulnerable populations without the services they relied on, I'm humbled to stand here and tell you that there was never a moment we had to consider such an option. We are significantly indebted to our loyal supporters who've helped us build the financial sustainability to weather this storm and ensure we delivered on our mission. When our members needed us the most and other sources of support were going away, we had a record year. We provided help to tens of thousands of new and existing veterans and families of the fallen. No matter what data point you look at, new people joining our mission, partnerships that were strengthened, or impactful services we were able to provide, this year was one of our strongest, and we could not be more proud or grateful for that support. 
the second thing that became very evident is that in addressing our mission, we were truly addressing the greatest challenges our country is facing today. This year exposed the reality that there are dire needs that must be met right here in the U.S. From providing food and safety equipment to vulnerable populations, to creating unity for people experiencing unrest. Our volunteers were leading the charge to address all of these issues. Tonight, we are asking you to invest in TMF's future with continued financial support. We will ensure that we are there to support veterans and families of the fallen throughout the duration of this challenging time and into the future. With your support, we can confidently say to those who need us, we are here for you today, we will be here for you tomorrow, and we will always be here for you. At any point in tonight's program, you can text the word GALA to the number below to make your donation. Your investment in TMF is not just a transaction. It's a long-term investment in the veterans and families of the fallen that we support. And it's a down payment on their future service that will pay off tenfold as they continue to lead and serve within our community. Now, I wanna introduce you to one of those veterans who embodies Spartan resilience and the if not me, then who ethos, both in and out of uniform. As a Lieutenant in the Navy Nurse Corps, Ashley Flynn was more than just a medical care provider. Ashley gave her patients, particularly those in the Wounded Warrior Unit, something they needed just as much as physical care. She gave them hope and the emotional support they needed during the most challenging time of their lives. This year, after over a decade of service in the Navy, Ashley entered civilian medicine, only to be faced with one of the largest public health crises our country has ever seen. Once again, she stepped up, serving in the intensive care unit on the front lines in the fight against COVID-19. Beyond her service in the Navy and in medicine, Ashley is a dedicated veteran with Travis Mannion Foundation in our Character Does Matter program. She takes the lessons learned in her military service to empower the next generation of leaders to live with character. I'm so very proud to introduce our first ever female veteran recipient of the If Not Me Then Who Award, Ashley Flynn. My name is Ashley Flynn, and I was a lieutenant in the United States Navy Nurse Corps. I am currently the assistant nurse manager of the surgical ICU at Boston Medical Center. My career as a Navy nurse started in Bethesda, Maryland. Did a three-year tour there. From there, I transferred to Fort Belvoir in Northern Virginia, worked on an inpatient medicine unit, and then transferred into the ICU. Left the United States, moved to a tiny little island in the middle of the Indian Ocean called Diego Garcia, where I worked as a flight nurse. I left Diego Garcia and transferred to San Diego, where I worked in the ICU at the large medical center there. I had been working on the inpatient cardiology unit. My boss pulled me in to the office and said, they're expecting a big surge. Uh, in Afghanistan, so we're gonna need you to go start working on the Wounded Warrior Unit. At this time in my life, I'm probably maybe 24 or 25, and now I'm taking care of patients who have completely life-altering injuries, and they're my age. For some of them, it was just getting home to their family. For some of them, it was taking on bigger challenges. For some of them, it was learning how to walk again, and they all persevered. Um, it was really incredible to watch. I think it changed me in a profound way where it made me look at what I can contribute to the world and not what the world can contribute to me. If my patients were having a bad day, I would always try to find something for them to think about that was different. I'm like, this will all be a distant memory and you'll be running the Marine Corps Marathon next year. And so the following year, a lot of them did end up 
running the Marine Corps Marathon, whether it was running on prosthetics, out there on a hand cycle. I had been a runner. I enjoyed running. I had never in my life thought that I would sign up for a marathon, but I felt like work towards something that I encourage my patients to work towards. Went to the expo, came across this small booth, and everybody had t-shirts on that said Team Travis and Brendan. It was so inspiring um, and so uplifting to see these people making something of somebody else's sacrifice. The type of community I found at Travis Manion Foundation was this incredible pool of people that is very much about passion and drive. Everybody kind of has that common thread of giving something back. Travis Manion Foundation has affected me personally to be able to mentor kids and help them realize that they have these inner character strengths that they probably don't think about every day. We had a monthly leadership academy on the USS Midway. If not me, then who? Where we'd get them at nine o'clock in the morning. They're completely different people by the time they left at two. You know, they just were vibrant and lively and feeling more comfortable in their skin. The different group of kids, whether it was a sports team or some kind of other community program, would come and we'd talk about like leadership skills, character strengths, doing some team building activities, and what they can bring to their community was even better. So when I transitioned out of the military, I took a role as an assistant nurse manager of a trauma and surgical ICU at Boston Medical Center. We got a huge surge of COVID patients. A lot of unknowns, a lot of loss of control, a lot of anxiety, a lot of anger that this is all happening to everyone. So people are dying without their family at their bedside. Um, that was really, really hard. The nurses had to step in and sort of be their loved one. A lot of people reflected on their experience with COVID as a war. I thought about what made people keep going, and that was teamwork. So being there for each other, showing up for each other, letting people know that you have their back. I would want to say to my Travis Manion Foundation community that I am extremely grateful for everything that they have taught me along the way about perseverance and service. It's the incredible people that are affiliated with the organization and what they are doing every day to bring the mission forward. Hello everyone, I'm Lieutenant General Retired Mike Lennington, CEO of Wounded Warrior Project. What an honor it is to be part of this year's, if not me, then who, virtual gala. The impactful partnership between Wounded Warrior Project and the Travis Mannion Foundation provides leadership, training, and engagement opportunities to wounded warriors in cities across our country. Doing so helps bring our warriors together while assisting them in regaining a sense of purpose so important to the recovery and rehabilitation. No one veterans organization can do this work alone, which is why we proudly stand beside the Travis Mannion Foundation as we continue to collaborate and support, doing the very best we can to honor the legacies of the fallen and the service and sacrifice of brave American heroes. Johnson & Johnson is a baby company, but we're also a company that controls HIV, fights cancer, repairs shattered bones, relieves depression, restores heart rhythms, helps you back from strokes, and keeps you healthy your whole life. From the day you're born, we never stop taking care of you.
The most successful leaders tend to have two things in common. They clearly identify their core values and they use those values to guide them through decisions large and small. Now, from my time in the military to my years at the helm of Johnson & Johnson, I've seen what that winning combination can accomplish. Mission-driven leaders are able to motivate their people, direct and realize their organization's most important work, and create a foundation for successful partnerships. Values-based leaders, well, they share a common belief in the importance of service and recognize that to be a force for good, they must strive to meet the needs of all their stakeholders. They also understand the value of partnership and recognize, recognize that success is most often achieved by working together towards a shared goal. Each year, the Travis Mannion Foundation is proud to honor a top executive with the Corporate Leadership Award. And today, we celebrate the Penn Mutual Life Insurance Company and their chairman, President and CEO, Eileen McDonald. Now, thanks to Eileen's visionary leadership, Penn Mutual consistently leads the way with their core values. And the Travis Mannion Foundation counts them as a key partner in improving communities throughout the country. Congratulations on this well-deserved recognition, Eileen, and thank you for showing us what purposeful leadership looks like in action. Now let's take a look at this powerful partnership. Penn Mutual and the Travis Banyan Foundation have really very comparable values. Uh, they begin with integrity, doing the right thing always, being part of a larger community where you want to be of service, and respecting all of the individuals that you come in contact with. The partnership between Penn Mutual and the Travis Mannion Foundation was really very natural. Our first involvement was the 9-11 Heroes Run. And shortly thereafter, we connected on a lot of other military-based programs. Penn Mutual is a supporter of our veterans. We know that the freedoms that we enjoy today are because of our military. And it's incumbent on each and every one of us to support them during their service, after their service. Our feeling is that the veterans themselves or members of the military community at large make wonderful, wonderful employees. They're dedicated, they're service oriented, and very loyal. And we are proud to help launch their second careers as many are returning to civilian life. Penn Mutual is in the legacy business. We're here to support future generations financially. The Travis Mannion Foundation, through its Operation Legacy program, shares the stories of our fallen heroes with the next generation. This is important for these stories to be told, for the next generation to appreciate the sacrifices that have been made for them. And through this program, the legacy lives on. The mantra of the Travis Mannion Foundation, if not me, then who, really resonated with the Penn Mutual Associates. I have great hopes for our future partnership. We have been exploring many opportunities in which we can continue to bring this great work across the country and get it in front of more and more individuals. We are dedicated to making future generations stronger. And as a team, both Penn Mutual and the Travis Mannion Foundation, I know we can achieve that. One year ago, Boeing made a commitment to partner with the Travis Mannion Foundation. 
we've teamed together to create a best-in-class leadership program for veterans and the spouses of the fallen that give them a once-in-a-lifetime experience. After six months of intense virtual classes, interactive discussions with amazing, inspiring leaders around the country, and community-based learning opportunities, I'm coming to you from the majestic state of Colorado. We are on a leadership expedition in these rugged mountains to learn more about ourselves and about how to work together. Welcome to the inaugural Spartan Leadership Program, sponsored by The Boeing Company. My name is Camille Miner. I'm the manager of membership at Travis Mannion Foundation, and I'm essentially the program manager for the Spartan Leadership Program. The Spartan Leadership Program is intended for veterans, families of the fallen, as well as some active duty, specifically those that might be transitioning into the civilian world. There are two virtual sessions for each month, as well as two required in-person sessions. We do a leadership expedition in the great mountains of Colorado, and we close out with a celebration of graduation at the end of November. What separates this program from other leadership programs is the self-exploration. It's not done in an academic layout. It's not done with leadership theories jammed down your throat each and every week. This program is specific to your personal development. As a leader, as someone who wants to serve within the community, as somebody who wants to leave behind a legacy. The virtual portion of the program is on Zoom and so we meet usually on Sunday evenings, bi-weekly, around 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time for about 90 minutes. We're rolling into Evolution 4, Session 1 tonight. Uh, tonight is our first session of Evolution 5. This month, we typically do a guest speaker for one of those sessions, and in the second session, we move into specific parts of the curriculum that reinforce what the guest speaker spoke about. If it's always someone else's fault, guess what? There's nothing you can fix, there's nothing you can do about it. But if you take ownership of the problems, well, then you can get those problems fixed. I watched them grow their personal purpose statements from looking at their character strengths to their leveraging their strengths and passions and values and moving it into what their strong leadership statement was. It's a sentence. It's a statement. I believe leadership is this. I watched them think about ideas that they could use to serve their community problems and I watched how those ideas took on a life of their own. Who had their identity that they have today when they were 14 years old, 18 years old, 24 years old, 40 years old? My identity, while it doesn't drastically change as I get older, it's still shifting. Honestly, life-changing because it's given, uh, given us a lot of time to uh, self-reflect and uh, learn some things about ourselves in our group that we probably uh, never would have learned without this program. The work that we're doing matters and to not forget that and to keep relying on each other, leaning on each other and pushing each other. The Spartan Leadership Program has been a, an amazingly insightful and beautiful journey into who I am, not just as a, a leader, but as a man and a father and a husband. The Spartan Leadership Program has meant to me the opportunity to continue to serve my community and my country and take that opportunity to give back to a place that's given me so much. The impact of this program on our participants has been an ignition of fire, of inspiration to do more and to serve more and to lead from the front. SLP has been awesome. And I think we in this room should count ourselves as blessed to be part of a program that makes us feel constantly elevated by the people around us. Good evening, everybody. I'm Rob Riggle, and it is an honor to be with you tonight here at the Travis Mannion Foundation virtual event. We had to go virtual because it's 2020, and this year has been a tough one. But it's an honor to be with you. I have had the privilege of being part of the TMF for several years. As a matter of fact, a couple years ago, I got to host uh, the If Not Me, Then Who Gala in Philadelphia. And that was a big night. It was a lot of fun, and it was such an honor to be part of that. As many of you know, uh, or some of you don't know, I 
I'm a Marine. I served for 23 years total. I retired as a Lieutenant Colonel in 2013, and serving in the Marine Corps was one of the great honors of my life. And as you've always heard, once a Marine, always a Marine. I believe that in my heart. No matter what I do in the future, no matter what I'm doing currently, nothing will compare to my time as a Marine. Um, that's why I think it's important to remember the men and women who wear the uniform today and to honor those that have worn it before. It's not lost on me what's going on right now in our nation. There is um, a lot of turmoil. Uh, a lot of that is being fed by our media, by social media. Uh, there's a lot of misrepresentations, a lot of misunderstanding and a lot of confusion and a lot of people are living in a place of fear right now and it seems unnecessary to me and that's why I think we need to work hard to create leaders that speak truthfully speak honestly and have the best interests of this country and all Americans on their mind so listen I know we can't all be together uh, I know we have to do this thing virtually and I do appreciate you being here virtually. But please, please give. Give what you can. I know times are tough right now. Uh, believe me, <laughs> I know they're particularly tough. But this is important. And we owe a debt of gratitude to our veterans and their families. I don't have to tell you that. You wouldn't be watching this if you didn't already know that. But I ask you to kindly give what you can and make a difference. As a proud corporate leadership award winner, the Carlisle Group is honored to partner with the Travis Manion Foundation in making a difference. If not me, then who? As we come to a close with this evening's production, I want to thank everyone for being part of Travis Manion Foundation's virtual If Not Me Then Who Gala. We're truly blessed to have the opportunity to celebrate together this year and showcase so many amazing stories of Spartan resilience. When my late wife Janice started this organization 13 years ago after we lost Travis, I could never have imagined we'd be here today. And after a particularly challenging year for all of us, it feels especially gratifying to look back on all the good we've achieved together. As you know well, the essence of the foundation can be summarized in five simple words. If not me, then who? These are the words that Travis spoke before his final deployment, and yet we still see their meaning embodied every day by each person who takes the actions necessary to do what's right. Our mission could not be possible without the strength and selflessness of our nation's military veterans and families of the fallen who inspire and lead this effort. They never stop serving their communities, their country, and each other. We invest in them because they have the passion and commitment to others that sets them apart. They're difference makers with a belief in something bigger than themselves. In the coming year, we look forward to expanding our impact by continuing to develop and innovate our programs, and we do so with your generous support. As we look ahead to 2021, we're committed to remaining completely transparent with our supporters. We have exciting plans to kick off the second year of our successful Spartan Leadership Program, sponsored by Boeing. We'll continue to expand our Character Does Matter youth development program powered by Under Armour to facilitate character education, including virtual learning environments throughout the country. We'll also be enhancing our online hub for training and well-being resources that's available to thousands of members at no cost. This platform, which we call the Spartan Development Center, is made possible thanks to the support from our premier healthcare partner, Johnson & Johnson. And as always, we'll constantly evaluate and measure the effectiveness of our programs, working to refine 
and expand the impact they create for tens of thousands. Your donation tonight will go a long way to help ensure the If Not Me Then Who ethos continues and our mission is spread. Don't forget to make your donation now by texting the word GALA to the number below. And as always, thank you for your continued investment in our Spartan community.